Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to some Let's Play Stellaris the Nemesis 3.0 update. No, I'm not going to say what it's called because I value my YouTube career and uh, monetization and my YouTube channel as a whole and the algorithm is... Oh, it is a cruel mistress, but never mind. Uh, we're going to play today as The Silence, a... Um, what's the official term? The Devouring Swarm hive mind, and uh, I did a video where I set up this entire uh, species and, and the whole uh, Let's Play, really, and that is episode zero, which I think is already out, or is, was supposed to release like a couple of minutes prior to this video, or like an hour at the most. Um, oh, anyways, so if, you, if you're interested in, in the sort of minutiae and the naming and all of that, you can uh, you can go and watch, uh, go watch that video. Uh, but I haven't done any actual gameplay whatsoever, so this is the official start of um, the game. And, uh, well, the basic objective of the whole playthrough is to become the Crisis. One of the new features in the new update slash DLC for Stellaris is that you can now actually be the Endgame Crisis. You can play as the Endgame Crisis, and, um, well, to my mind, this is uh, the most direct and forward way of doing that. So, let us begin. Um, I've already, already set a path for um, for our... Uh, actually, no, that's, that's not how I want to do it. Uh, let's send the science ship that way, and let's see if we can build something. Now, uh, I am very, very, very interested in the new sector system and how it works. I know I'm going to unpause and can actually start uh, playing the game. But I know that the new Sector AI is a million times better. Uh, matter of fact, in the Facebook group I also mentioned in the previous video, uh, someone made a whole like analysis of the new Sector AI and has been following everything that the Sector AI does, and so far it is on point. If you design it to be like, um, or even Planetary AI, if you design it to make uh, energy, that's what they will build, and they uh, that's sort of the buildings that they will focus on. Uh, they'll do a good job of managing everything, and they won't just sit around doing nothing, which was a huge problem back in the day. The AI just didn't do anything. Uh, they would have infinite resources, virtually. They would just stockpile them, and they wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't build upgrades, they wouldn't build... Um, Construction. Anything. They would just sort of sit there. That was, that, was, uh, that was a pretty big, pretty big problem back in the day, but now apparently it is a million times better, and oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh god. Oh god. Oh god. It's it's okay. It's okay. Um, that is a bug. That is a known bug. I've seen reports of it and it's pissing me off to be honest. But there should be an update um, released today or tomorrow or something along those lines that'll fix it. Uh, it's probably out by the time you're seeing the video. I sort of record these in a little bit of a backlog for. Um, you know, university purposes, uh, essentially, my uh, schedule is kind of unpredictable, so, yeah. Anyways. I also would like to apologize for the clicky keyboard. Behold. I don't think it's that bad, but then again, like, day one when I got it, it was, ho I mean, not horrible. I love it. I love the sound it makes, but it was so loud. It, as the days went by, it became more silent in my ears, and I got more and more and more used to it. So, I'm not sure how loud it is on your end right now, but uh, it's a strategy game, we're not going to be doing a lot of clicking with the keyboard anyway, so... Uh, like I said, I, I also mentioned this in the previous video, I'll probably um, get a different one for uh, for your recording purposes, just to sort of avoid the whole clicky thing, but yeah, anyways. Uh, go to speed 3 and uh, see how things go. Dearth. Why does that sound familiar? Oh, D Dearthu from, uh, from Warhammer, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that name sounds familiar. Yes, yes it does, Juggernaut. Shall we build a... Uh, you know what, not yet. Let's let's see what's... Um... Actually, you know what, let's survey that. And then we need you to survey that also. Very important. Build like two science ships, I think. And... Those science ships are also going to need scientists. Uh, unfortunate. Unfortunate. We do have... Well, I can't say unfortunate because I have two genius scientists from the get-go, so... No, I can't say this is unfortunate because it is not. 
Go with a 12 year old and um, this one, I guess. Don't have much energy, can't really choose which one I want. But starting off with two genius scientists is a sizable advantage. Uh, let's go with expansion. I mean, we are playing a, a hive mind. We're not going to go tall. Um, expansion is, is necessary, though it doesn't need to be the first thing you pick. Uh, because you're not going to set up your first colony in a while. Um, supposedly. You know, we'll, 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 depends, but usually it's going to take a little bit of time for you to get your first colony going. And that means you can pick usually one sort of um, thing from a different tree and then go to expansion, but... It's, it's a bit too min-maxy, it doesn't really matter all that much. This is a very pretty, pretty nebula and all that. Oh, and the bug's gone. Okay, awesome. So it only happens occasionally. That's uh, that's good to hear. Or a C, even. How's the... Uh, okay, so five uh, job slots so far. So this, it's kind of pointless to build anything over here, though I would really like alloy foundries. Where if I'm going to build it. Okay, we've discovered, ooh, a couple of things. An archaeological site and a thing in the blob. Well, we're also going to need another construction ship, so let's get that going. I'm going to send it over here. And the start is going to be pretty silent, I'm afraid. Okay, that, that is the last, that is the first and last pun <laughs> regarding this, uh, I must say, kind of emo-ish um, species in terms of origin, but, you know, it's... Um, it's a devouring swarm, and it's sort of in the description to begin with. Okay, the Silent Searcher Unit 2 survey, I like it. Silent Searcher Unit 2. This is not bad. Uh, of the asteroid is temporarily halted as a probe is caught by an enormous gravitational anomaly. Ah, okay. At least no one got hurt. He gains 100 experience, which is nothing, but we do gain 500 research. I say it was nothing, it promoted him to the next level, so... Clearly it wasn't all useless. Okay, let's get the uh, construction ship over there, start building our first... Uh, start building our first outposts. There is uh, a whole galaxy ahead to, uh, or a foot to be conquered. Uh, this one you're just going to leave be for now. You're uh, a little bit too low level to be tampering with that. Through hard work and experience, Scientist Motile Organ 3 has developed new skills. Please tell me that's one of the scientists. No, but... But... It's this one. Archaeology... Ah, that's... Look, this is very fortunate, and yet at the same time very unfortunate, too. Because archaeological excavation speed plus 25% is amazing. Spark of Genius is also amazing, though. Which one do I want more? I want the Spark of Genius more. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Pause, 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 goddammit.
Ah, there you go. <laughs> I couldn't find him for a minute. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so survey those, and then you'll get more job orders as uh, time progresses. You need to build a star base there. Okay, cool. We're gonna go down to speed two. It's a little bit hectic. Uh, yeah, that was. I mean, that was extremely fortunate in that it's a it's a very rare occurrence to get those things. Like, um, Spark of Genius is, like, plus 10% research is amazing. I, 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 I want to show you how amazing it is, because a Unity upgrade here is research speed plus 10. That's one of the Ascension perks. Now, okay, fair enough, it does give you more rare technologies, and... and it is plus 10% on top of the 10%, and it's, you know, it's not dependent on the scientist, but... I mean, this is the start of the game, and we're, we're like... I dare say right now, minus the technologically, artificially buffed empires, we're probably gonna be the technologically most advanced thing in the universe. Which, uh... Yeah, that's... You gotta admit, that's no small feat. Um, I'm also going to need some farms, though I'm assuming... Uh, yeah, I'll leave that be for now. I'm assuming... Yeah, there's uh, there's two slots for, for farms and two for maintenance and maintenance drones. Yeah, alright, that'll, that'll sort itself out then. You! Um, I like the sort of really far off distant planets, usually have something interesting in them, well... I'm basing that off of literally nothing. No, they don't. They don't usually have something interesting on them, but usually they are interesting because they are so far away, and whenever you find something on them, you're like, oh, that's memorable. Um, which I guess is a very different thing to being interesting, but, yeah, anyways. You sort of kind of get the point. Uh, Speed 3 again. The growth speed being so low is going to be... Uh, okay, so he now has the industry trait. Too bad, so sad. Um, unless it's one of the scientists, which I, again, find it hard to believe. Yeah. Oh, well. We have the perfect science team. <laughs> You know, I just remembered, I remember the Half-Life, I'm with the science team. Okay, so, yeah, anyways, um, Organ 3 is now with the science team, and, uh, that's oh so important for his, uh, future personal development and all that good stuff. I'm gonna grab Prosperity now, because we don't need one mind yet, because we're not gonna set up a... Uh, we are going to set up a colony immediately, who am I kidding? Uh, let's colonize this right now, we need 500 food. We can get 500 food. We can buy 500 food. Voila. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to start naming them extremely boringly. World 001. Let's go like this. There's not going to be more than, than like 999 planets, right? There's there's no way there's going to be more than 999 planets in this uh, in this run. That's just just silly to assume that there would be more, right? It's a big galaxy, but it's not that big. There's probably less than 999 stars in it. I think there's literally 1,000, but this is just, just not all of them are going to have planets. <laughs> Though I'm pretty sure with endgame tech you can make it so all of them have at least a habitat, but... You know, we can make 999 habitats have different names, such as original, very original names, such as Habitat 001. <laughs> um, I do need to sort of deprive planets of their, um, 
of their uniqueness and originality, this is going to be the only interestingly named planet, and everything else is going to be the same, and it's going to be like... Some would argue less interesting than giving them proper names, but I put it to you, it is the sacrifice of everything else in the galaxy that's going to make like a few planets very interesting and, and unique. If they're all interesting and unique, then none of them are interesting and unique, you know what I mean? Furthermore, not only that, but, um... Ancient Survey plus four minerals, that's that's very good. That's very, very good, actually. We're gonna build a new base there soon, and probably a planet. Uh, yes, though not the Arctic world, and it is a little bit small. It's 11 size. Maybe not prioritize that, but yes, you know, eventually, yes. Okay, cool. Um... Construction venture completed. Good. I didn't want you to research that. I sort of clicked without really looking. Enable auto research. Click to set research option to be pick or also research options to be picked automatically. Well, that's not gonna lead to anything horrible ever happening ever in this universe, I'm sure. Jesus. That said, let's research better AI. <laughs> um, I kind of want to do it just to see what happens. But I also don't want to do it because I'm terrified. Okay. Thing is, I should probably, like, slow down a little bit in terms of, you know, me talking and in terms of the game speed. Um, the sort of first couple of years, maybe 20, even 30 years of, of every game, um, or in-game years of, in, in Stellaris, I mean, are, a, are very samey in that, you know, you do pretty much the same things. Okay, you sort of flesh out your start a little bit more, maybe, and yeah, you sort of have a, a couple of go-to texts that you need to... To go to, and it's not all, it's not like all of them are exactly carbon copies of each other, of course, but at the same time, like, hmm, colonial remains, I, I really like that, that's good. Uh, but at the same time, like, you, you know, you, you sort of know exactly what to expect, and whenever something's changed in the game, and it's, uh, the change is visible so early on, that sort of upsets the balance of the universe ever so slightly, I'm, I'm kidding, but... It does freak me out a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do the Positron Bombardment. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, it's a, it's a project, isn't it? You need to... Yeah, you need to finish manually. Uh, we can do that. Research projects when you're done. Cool. Uh... Ooh. Uh, I did not set policies, but there's not much to set, to be honest, with uh, with this production. I'm going to keep a balance for now. I think eventually I'm going to switch to extraction. Initial borders obviously closed, obviously aggressive, can't uh, change that. Orbital bombardment, indiscriminate war, philosophy, unrestricted diplomacy, hunger. Yeah, there's literally nothing to set other than... Uh, Production policy. Uh, you could say, you could argue bombardment, but there's no reason to have selective, because if you want to use selective, you just click on the fleet and, and say it's selective. Like, you know, this is this gives you the option of, of indiscriminate, it doesn't force you to use indiscriminate, so, you know, this is kind of like a non... So I, I genuinely don't know why this is even an option, to be brutally honest with you, um, but yeah, anyways. Currently designed ships yet? Is there anything else? Edicts, yeah. Uh, we have none available for now. I swear to you, this wasn't a thing until recently. I'm not sure. I'm, 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 eh. I'm not willing to say that this was added in the last patch. Maybe it was. Sorry, squeaky chair. Um, I'm not willing to say that this was added in the last part. Uh, in the last patch, maybe it wasn't. But. I think this was added recently. This is the number of edicts you could have going at any given time. Upkeep free and everything, you know, like, 
just set it and forget it basically and currently it's only one but there's ways to manipulate that that figure um anyways yeah i could have sworn that was not there back in the day and it was something that you just sort of uh wait did i not tell you to survey these I probably just clicked explore and, and completely forgot that ah, that was uh, that was kind of silly. Uh, coil guns, definitely. I like kinetic weapons. Bit bored of lasers. Been using lasers quite often over the last couple of games that I've played. Um, I think they were all off camera or uh, not recorded, but anyways. A little bit bored of lasers. Uh, of course, the game doesn't care if you're bored of, of something or not. It's, um, it's all perfectly viable. You use lasers for a specific type of... Let's um, speed, yes. For a specific type of enemy and you use uh, ballistics for... Um, or uh, kinetic for uh, a different type of enemy, but... You know, you sort of have to focus on one or the other at the start anyway. And besides, you can sort of vary it up with different... military solutions later down the line. Oh, can I not open the music thing? Oh, yes, can we? What's the purpose of this, then? Eh, okay. Um, play that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, who found an anomaly? You did. And you're researching it. Construction okay. Did I click research just sort of while looking at the music player? Probably. Probably. Alright. Um, I, I feel like I wanted to, to start another line of conversation and just completely forgot about it. That's very, very possible. Um, industrial district... Foundry domes turn minerals and minerals into alloys. Doesn't an alloy foundry do that to begin with? So this is a waste of a slot. Well, not really, because you know there's there's limits to everything. So not really a waste. Okay. Okay. Um, I do have new syndrome. And I, I feel like I explain this every time I cover a patch, or a DLC, or, or anything along those lines in any game, but... Um, new Syndrome is when there's like a big patch, big update, or a new DLC or whatever, a new expansion pack or, or something like that. Now, God, that's, that's like an extinct term nowadays, isn't it? Expansion pack, that doesn't exist anymore. Now I'm showing my age now, but anyways... Um, when, whenever there's something like that that's, that's released for a game, uh, you go into it expecting to find new things everywhere, and you look for changes, and you see changes where there in reality are none. So, like, a, a, a stupid example is, like, did you know you can now left-click on fleets and then right-click to move them to a different system? This DLC is amazing! No, it's idiot. It's been there since... Probably the pre-alpha of the game, or something along those lines. Is no, it's just that you know. Case in point, I'm now not sure whether um, whether uh, industrial districts have been a thing for Relic Worlds forever or not. Possibly not. Who knows? Um, but I do have a sort of. A quirky and unique tendency, let's say, maybe annoying to some, but quirky and unique, to not look at any of the patch notes, not look at anything, any news regarding um, regarding DLC whatsoever. I knew there's there's an espionage system, I, I, I know that, but um, I... And the reason I know is because I was speculating on the, the espionage system and people were being like, no, then Paradox is just trolling you. No, 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 no they're not. I was, I was right. Um, thank you, thank you. I'm just kidding. But anyways, like, it's... 
I have this sort of quirky and annoying tendency to just not look at anything, and I really like to experience and, and sort of explore um, new content firsthand and not really have, know what I'm what I'm in for. So yeah. To that end, um, I'm not sure if this is this is a, a new edition or not, and I'm not sure whether. Um, This is just a Relic World thing, or it's a thing on, on every planet. I suppose I'll know... Oh, there you go. Yeah, in, Industrial District here. Yeah, this is a new thing. This is a new thing, and... Uh, well... That's going to affect the barren balance of economy a fair bit. But mind you, the number of districts per planet is still the same. Yeah, so... Ergo, the capacity's the same. Ergo, this change isn't that... impressive or game-altering. I mean, it's, it's subtle, but it's not that important. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's still the same thingamajig. You know, whether you got your... Um, I suppose there's subtle changes, but whether you got your alloys from alloy foundries or you got them from districts, the, the sort of core of it is kind of similar, because if you get them from industrial districts, now you're going to have less generator, mining and farm, or agriculture districts, and probably less hive districts as well, in the planet. But you're gonna have more slots to buff, sort of, every one of these. And I guess this means you can specialize planets a bit more. Um, which is kind of cool, but I don't think that was a... Uh, a particularly a sore spot for the economy of, of the game. Um, I think a much bigger sore spot for the game is this. Yeah, I think that's that's a much much bigger problem for this game is that I can't actually manually distribute who works where, and I can't min max like that. And when I favor something, I can't like tell them what not to favor. You know what I mean? Like, I can be like, okay, favor this over anything else, but like, okay, so we're gonna take out of the maintenance drones. Well, no, 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 don't do that. Like, take out of these drones and not, but yeah. I can't do that, and, and sometimes it's really annoying, but most of the times it balances itself out just fine, but, you know, sort of minutia and, and, and little details like that used to be um, a Paradox thing back in the days of uh, older Paradox games. Now it seems a little bit more, um, well, not, not simpler, but it just gives you less control, which is Kind of annoying between me and you. Uh, okay, spawning pools definitely, because it provides amenities and spawning drone jobs, and yeah. Monthly organic pop assembly, yeah. We're gonna go with that. Spawning pools is awesome. Uh, also, this isn't going to be a food-rich planet, is it? But we're gonna need an agri agricultural district anyway. Um... Five districts being built. I'm going to need an ag agricultural district here, Assistant too. Because food is uh, is running rather low. Um, colony. Yes. Colony. Okay. We'll buy 500 food, and I think that's all we need, really. Colonize this. Planet 002. And there we go. Awesome. Eventually I'm going to need to do this archaeological dig, but currently I think exploring the universe is, uh, is a lot more important. How are we doing influence-wise? Very, very good. Very, very good. Happy to see that. Empire Sprawl is reduced, we don't really need that. Starbase Upkeep, how much am I paying for Starbase Upkeep? 11 credits. Mm. Okay, what do I get when I finish all of this? 
Goalie development speed plus 25%. Mm, not the most useful. There's also a technology which increases it by 25%, but like, to my mind, I don't know, maybe this is just me being bad, I don't know, YouTuber being bad at the game, but colonies finish so quickly anyway, and it's not like this influences the development speed when it's set up like a planet like this, you know, its growth speed and everything. It's not like it changes that, it just changes the amount of time it takes for a colony ship to land and unpack effectively, right? And there's like two or three things that reduce it in this game by like 75%, which you would think is a huge number, but it's like it takes what, like a month or two, a year, doesn't matter. Okay, a year, that, that is a bit much and, and it does, but like it takes what, like a month, two months maybe? I don't know. It happens so quickly that you're like, you just, I, colonies for me are just like set it and forget it, you know, like, not that important. Um, what do I want for the second one though? Tell you what, I think I'm going to leave it up to you. Because uh, I'm going to upload the first two videos and then I'm going to go on a bit of a break. Um, and then well, I'm going to upload probably the, the or I'm going to make the second video the day it comes out. So there's not going to be any backlog. So, to that end, tell you what, why don't you pick me the second, um, the second, what are these even called? The second tradition category. Yeah, let's, let's do it like that. So, tell me down in the comments below, DM me or whatever you prefer, and, uh, we'll see what we, we'll see what we go with. Um, I really like the, the flavor text in all of these. I, I really do, so you can um, you can play around with that a little bit too. But anyways, yeah, I think this is enough for this video. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Juggernaut. Please remember to like, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. I want to stay tuned with the rest of the series on the channel. Until next time, have fun, take care, and bye-bye.